Hi there, PNG Assassin here. I just wanted to give a tutorial on how to create a seed box so you can uh, tour it more freely maybe or just uh, whatever. Uh, what I do with my seed box is I seed uh, Ubuntu and Linux distros. So let's get started. First of all you'll need to download PuTTY which is a Windows SSH client and Telnet of course and you can just go here, you can google it uh, uh, I'll link this in the description though and then you'll also need FileZilla this will help you download the file that you uh, seed with or download on your virtual private server and to get a virtual private server you can use low end box because you don't really need a high uptime server for this uh, I live in Michigan so I would probably click Chicago or maybe uh, Scranton or New York but uh, I usually do Chicago and I would recommend a virtual private server with 256 megabytes of RAM or more um, this is because RTOR, the client I will teach you how to install needs that much RAM so for instance four dollars a month that's not bad and fifteen dollars a quarter I mean that's really dirt cheap but of course virtual private servers you share it with everyone else so you really don't want to host your website or something with high bandwidth um, let's see so low end box is where you should go for that and we'll we'll be using uh, libtorrent our torrent project um, you can install a web GUI but kinda need some more RAM with that and this is just really low-end and basic so currently I'm using Alien VPS they're they're okay um, not too spectacular but they do the job so I'm actually just gonna create a new one and as you can see my specs bandwidth 4 gigs of 250 71, 512 1 gig of 25 used I have I have their one month plan at six dollars a month, and I use Debian six thirty two bit. So with whatever VPS company you go with, you can do this on CentOS, uh, Fedora, SuSE, but you have to compile it from code and source. But for me, it's just easier to just go with Debian. Debian 6 to be exact 32 bit 64 bit I don't know I don't see a reason to use 64 bit but uh, if you're most people that start with Linux are used to Ubuntu but actually you'd want to use Debian for such a lightweight uh, VPS so for instance I'm used to Debian or Ubuntu 10.4 but it uses so much RAM just sitting there doing nothing uh, I don't like to use it on a low-end machine so, uh, Debian 6, 32 bit. Let's reinstall. Take about 10 minutes to complete, but that's not too bad. So, you just go home, manage. Uh, so, for instance, uh, I have another server at Chicago VPS, and I pay $12 a year for that, but it's only got 120 or 128 megabytes of RAM, so I really can't do VPS on or Seedbox on that. Uh, I can kind of see but our torrent kind of crashes and I don't really want to optimize it because I don't want to take the time to do that. But uh, let's see if this is booted up yet. And it looks like it is. Sometimes it takes more than 10 minutes but it seems like it took quite a quick time. So for your root password you'll just want to type a password you'll remember but you can of course come back to this control panel and change it, change it later. So now, and of course, download PuTTY. I actually have it right here. Run Alien VPS. Here we go. Okay, so because I've used so many SSH uh, certificates, yeah, it's coming up with a new fingerprint. I can just click OK. And then the login is root, and then the password is the password you just set in the web configuration. So when you first get your VPS, you'll want to update it. So with Debian, you do apt get update apt, and and that uh, that's just a Linux command. It so you don't have to type it later again. 
then yf is yes to all updates and force the update. I just like to do it all in one line because I don't want to have to type app get upgrade yf later after it updates. It'll just do it on its own. You want to do updates just to make sure your VPS is as secure as, secure as possible with the different updates it can do. If you're an advanced Linux user, you can obviously remove the special packages that come with it. For instance, I believe Samba is included, so I mean, you don't need Samba if you're just doing Linux uh, Seedbox. Or like, as you can see, Apache, you don't need Apache. You don't need uh, Bind. You don't need that. Samba right there. Here it is. Um, Samba Common, Lib, Cups, I mean, you're not printing. Python you might need, OpenSSL. You don't really need these extra packages that are downloading, but I just keep them in anyways. As you can see, I just try to set up the Samba server, so it's like, what's the point? Alright, so now that updates are done, we can start to install rtorrent and screen and nano. So to install applications, you just type apt get install. Uh, apt get install. Um, We'll need rtorrent because you can. Let's see, what is this? Download. So you can use uh, subversion, uh, get, and but you need these dependencies, or you can just download the Debian package, and that's a lot easier for me and probably for you. So we're gonna have to get install rtorrent screen, which means you can keep an rtorrent session open without having to keep your uh, SSH session open. So I'll explain that later actually. Screen rtorrent nano. Nano is a text editor command line. I do not like VI. It's fairly hard to navigate and I've never learned it. I've I, uh, learned command line text editing through nano. So we'll install that. And of course with the YF switches.